Temperature in the member looks quite busy out there. Impression start approved face south. London Heathrow, Europe's biggest and busiest airport. Transporting more than 74 million passengers every year. This is your passport, please. Have you got your boarding cards in your hand, ladies? This is so big. This is so complex. It's got with steroids. With the flights taking off or landing every 45 seconds, Heathrow is operating at full capacity. And there's no room for error. You know, if Heathrow sneezes, the rest of Europe and the world catches a cold. We could have blown something, is that what you're saying? Even the smallest problem can cause chaos. 915 and 919 have been cancelled. Nothing is landing, nothing's taking off. And cost the multi-billion pound business of fortune in fines and lost revenue. We lost about £3,000 just because of you, sir. This series goes behind the scenes. This is the bit no one sees. To follow the hidden army of staff working against the clock to get thousands of planes away on time. Every second counts. The size of a small city, Heathrow has its own police force. Excuse me, sir. Can I ask you to come with me, please? Paramedics. <laughs> and vets. Wow. <laughs> From the baggage handlers and security officers. Look at that. Oh, you can't take that on the aeroplane. No, no. To the air traffic controllers and pilots. I'm not going to say I'm living the dream, but I... Everyone has a vital role to play. All good clean still. In keeping Britain's most famous airport flying. It's in the hands of God, really. Good afternoon, Pock. In Heathrow's central control room, staff are monitoring every inch of the airport. From the passengers in terminals to queues and traffic. With how busy we are at Heathrow, we look at our punctuality scores and our arrivals and departing punctuality is, is pretty much what we live and die by because we know that that's absolutely the heart of what our passengers want, is to get away on time. And trust me, we want you to get away on time as much as anyone else does. But the one thing Heathrow can't control is the weather. Today, Storm Imogen is blowing gale force winds across the airport. The 60-knot winds are so severe, they're starting to disrupt the flow of arriving planes. We've got high winds, and what's more problematic is the gusting crosswinds. Weather has ramifications quite a long way down the line. This problem isn't just at Heathrow, this is for the whole of the southeast of England. So where are these aircraft actually going to land? Out on the airfield, safety officer Simon is monitoring the deteriorating conditions. You can see in front of me here just how strong the wind is. Uh, the guy's trying to do his, uh, his coat up there. He's really fighting to stand up there at the, at the moment. So normally at Heathrow we'll be landing around about 45 planes per hour. Due to the strong wind today, um, we have got some air traffic delays, meaning that we are landing 32 per hour. Inside the cabin, it will probably be a little bit uh, bumpy. The pilot would have explained that uh, it's not going to be a smooth landing, but I would uh, visualise it as just a scary fairground ride. You may feel a little bit of jolt in your stomach. Very well done by that pilot there. Whilst Simon battles the weather outside, inside Terminal 4, Sunita, a passenger experience manager, is dealing with the knock-on effects of the storm. Please, passengers only, passengers only, please. Make sure you've got your boarding cards in your hand, ladies. Just here, sir, and madam. On days like today, it's inevitable that we're going to have cancelled flights. We have no control over what the weather is, so it's really up to the gods at the end of the day. It's all hands on deck. I just need to get downstairs to arrival, see what's going on. Sunita has been called to deal with 200 stranded passengers whose connecting flight to Delhi has been cancelled. These are the passengers who were all checked in this morning for a flight which has been now diverted to um, Frankfurt. They're actually waiting for uh, the coaches to take them to the hotels. 
Hello. Yes, sir. How can I help you? We've been waiting since four of, eight, seven, four hours. Yeah. And we're standing. We are treating like goats. We do not have any clear information. Yeah. Do you have any idea when we will get next flight? All right, that's something the airline are working on as we speak. The first coach has arrived, but with only 50 seats, there's a rush to get on. Can we just stay in a queue, please, sir? Just stay in a queue, then at least everybody will get on. In these situations, it should be the airline who deal with the passengers. But with nobody around, Sunita has to manage the crowds. Sir, just the queue is round there. The queue is round there, please, sir. I don't want pushing in, you know, because everybody's going to get upset. There will be another coach coming now, there won't Roughly how long? Five minutes. Well, that's what they were told before, and it's taken almost about 15, 20 minutes, and people were standing out in the cold. Right, this coach is going. With the bus now full, a handful of elderly passengers have been left behind. During next coach, I'm going to be in the terminal. in the terminal. Sorry. Andra, please come inside because it's very cold. You're going to wait outside. We came from Canada. We're going to India. The airline is just stupid. They're not manning good, you know, all day. They're out there. Bad. When you feel that there's nobody else around and people are a bit lost, um, somebody has to resume control, um, and basically that's what I'm doing. Outside on the airfield, the winds are getting stronger, and loose items are being blown onto the runways. Simon is on the lookout for foreign object debris, or FOD. Certain types of FOD, like small items of metal or stone, if they were ingested into an aeroplane engine, then they could cause quite significant damage or could cause that uh, engine to fail. So it's vitally important that we've got all teams out and about patrolling, looking to ensure that uh, the taxiways, the grass and the runways is clear. Ah, I think I can see an item of FOD blowing across the stand there. So the trick is, is to position the vehicle upwind so that the item of FOD comes to me rather than me having to face the FOD. So it's, it's a bit of goalkeeping going on here. So this is a, a, a pillowcase. It's uh, obviously um, come out of the uh, come out of the aeroplane. The size of it would indicate to a pilot that there is something significant on the taxiway. Last year, 2,400 minutes of delay at Heathrow were attributed to FOD. We have another item of FOD that's just about to blow behind that uh, departing aircraft there. Missed it. Wind's too strong at the moment. I'll have to reposition myself over there. That item of FOD's just about to blow towards the landing, uh, landing runway. And yes, the fence has caught it for me. It's done a job. So uh, I'll still take it away because it may bounce over. And as you can see, the actual landing runway is just a few yards beyond this, uh, beyond this fence. It's just an item of uh, plastic. When not screwed up, it looks quite sizable. Uh, that on a landing runway, um, would be a visual deterrent for a plane. He wouldn't know exactly what that is, so therefore he could actually stop. Uh, operations will be slowed, and our job is to ensure that we run the airfield smoothly and efficiently and safely. While Simon struggles to keep the airfield clear, back in Terminal 4, Sunita's stranded passengers are still waiting for their coach. Blanket. 
I'm just trying to look after the passengers' well-being. Nobody's here actually looking after them. Finally, some good news. The coach has arrived. If you don't mind. Okay? We're putting the wheelchair passengers first. So let's just not have this mad. Please, to see. Please. Go in to see where it's I know, I know, I know. I'm just a man on audacity here. This time, Sunita is determined to leave none of the older passengers behind. How would you feel if that was your aunt, your child, your daughter? You know, it, it's all to do with that. And I think it's more about you putting yourself in their shoes and how would you like to be treated? Thank you. Thank you for being so patient. The passengers will be back at Heathrow first thing tomorrow for their rearranged flight. I feel tired, my legs are absolutely aching, my back's aching, and I've had... Uh, I think I need to take my next dose of paracetamol in order to keep me going. <laughs> At Heathrow, airlines live or die by their turnaround time. The speed at which they're able to get an arriving plane ready to depart again. In Terminal 5, Phil is preparing for one of the airport's shortest turnarounds. How you doing, The flight from Brussels is on approach. From its arrival, Phil will have just 50 minutes to get the plane back in the sky. Time's critical. We need to get them away. The customers expect to arrive and depart on time, and also it's in uh, the company's interest because the aeroplane's making money when it's flying. So, but uh, yeah, 50 minutes is tight, but uh, we'll do it. Right, the aircraft has now landed. I'm going to now go and meet the arrival. Lots of walking, lots of stairs, but it saves on the gym bill. With such a tight turnaround, Phil has no room for delay. He needs the arriving passengers off as quickly as possible. The brakes are on. The countdown begins now. Hold on. Here we go. As Phil manoeuvres the air bridge into position, the fuelers and baggage handlers get to work under wing. Good, yourself? No specialists. Lovely, perfect. Thank you very much. We normally take about anything between seven and ten minutes for the passengers to get off. Eats into your departure time and eats into your turnaround time. With the plane cleared, Phil now has less than 40 minutes until takeoff. Cleaners are just turning up. They will then start cleaning the aircraft from the rear and hopefully have it in a ship shape ready for the passengers in a few moments. They get given seven minutes. Believe it or not, so uh, they do a fantastic job in these time allocated. Oh, catering, we have catering. So we'll take the old catering off and put the new catering on for the new flight ready. It takes just six minutes to remove the finished meals and put fresh food on the plane. And with 20 minutes to go, the pilots arrive to prepare and check the aircraft. Cleaners are just about finished. OK, looks good. It's all clean. Right, Will, customers on the way. With just 15 minutes until departure, the ground crew leader, Anastasia, clears all staff from under the plane and does her final safety checks. We get ten minutes to stop at short to uh, do the job that we have to do. Hello, just to let you know, ground checks are complete and we're ready to push. Now it's down to air traffic control to give the final clearance to push back. 
be a 3.9 per afternoon after the outbound company 3.19, push and start approved, face west. Take care now. Cheers. Bye bye. We're, uh, we've uh, achieved our objectives. We're ready to go uh, three minutes before departure time. In just 47 minutes, the flight to Brussels is ready to depart again. And the clock stops on one of the fastest turnarounds at the airport. A successful mission, as they say. It's not just people and bags that need to be offloaded from arriving planes. Each year, 100,000 tonnes of human waste is sucked out of all planes landing at Heathrow. The airport's waste services team must keep this endless deluge of sewage moving. Today, veteran engineer John is training 21-year-old apprentice Elliot. We look after all the water on the airport, not, not just the sewage. If it can get messy, and if you don't like poo, yeah. you're probably not suited for this section, because you are going to be chest deep in it at some point. <laughs> Things have to be kept moving here. You can't have terminals without water or the toilet stop working. You soon know about it. All plain waste is deposited into one of Heathrow's sewage pits, but today, one of them is blocked and needs to be cleared. See, anything that go down the toilet in an aeroplane is also going to end up here. There she goes. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Oh, it's splashing. This could be the one with a bag of diamonds in, Elliot. Right? Yes, yeah, that's the way to look at it. That's, that's, all, it. We, that's all we fingers crossed, I think. Yeah. <laughs> As you can probably tell by the state of us, we ain't found any yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get you sorted out then. All right. This is the first time Elliot has been down a sewer pit, an essential part of his training. I've got an issue of your special tool now that you're going to be using. OK. It's very high-tech. <laughs> I don't know if you've done the training course, but that's what you're going to be using, all right? Sounds good. So... You check I'm all, all right? Never have pasta in our restroom, all right? <laughs> <laughs> John switches on the gas monitor, which will warn them of any potentially dangerous gas build-up underground. Right. So now we are underneath the vehicle bays, OK? Yep. So basically what happens is they, they dump just over there. Uh -huh. The liquid comes down. This is the traps. Not very big, as you can see, and inside there is a metal basket, OK? Uh -huh. almost completely blocked, and Elliot needs to clear it to prevent damage to the machinery. Nice and easy lift her out. Lovely big coin. 50 somethings. There you go. Yeah. Australian. Australian, is it? There you go. But they do say where there's muck, there's brass. Right, yeah, so get your super scooper. If you don't clean them out, anything that comes off the aircraft or, or goes into the pit, they'll just block it up. Yeah. If you get a lot of mobile phones, some of the chaps have found bullets before in uh, some of the other ones. Uh, <clears throat> of course, you do get drugs, people, drug mules on the plane or panic when they land. And uh, just give that a scrape out underneath, actually, Elliot. Yeah. That's not quite. And instead of actually taking them through customs, they'll chuck them down the toilet on the plane. They'll end up down there. He's doing really well, really well. I'm absolutely hating it. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I had much of a weak stomach, but <laughs> apparently I do. 
Oh, I don't even want to think about food right now. <laughs> Shit. Oh. Right, okay, let's go. The gas monitor's just gone off. Let's go, let's go. The alarm on Elliot's gas monitor sounds. Okay, coming out. Go. They immediately evacuate, much to the relief of Elliot. The smell was horrible. It's quite nice to breathe fresh air. But when I first opened one of those boxes, took the lid off, the other night I threw up in my mouth a little bit. <laughs> it was horrendous. <sighs> yeah, sort of glad, glad it's done. Back to base for tea and medals. Yeah. <laughs> Starving now. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> With the pit cleared, it can now start processing aircraft waste again. And Elliot is one step closer to being a fully fledged Heathrow engineer. I'm glad I didn't have breakfast because that would have definitely come up. At Heathrow, passenger numbers increase every year. This month alone, Two and a half million people will come through arrivals. <laughs> Catherine and her children are waiting at Terminal 3. We're waiting for my mum and their grandmother, who they, um, we haven't seen her for a year, so it's, um, and we miss her. It's Sydney. It's half a planet away. It's not an easy flight to do, so when they come over, it's a real, it's a real treat. I just wish it was closer. <laughs> also in arrivals is Letitia, waiting to greet her daughter, Nathareth, from Honduras. Letitia left Honduras 15 years ago to find work in Europe so that she could pay for Nathareth to go to school. She's been sending every spare penny home and hasn't seen her daughter for six years. Yo decidí salir de Honduras porque la situación era muy difícil um, y tenía dos opciones: o seguir este allá, pero no tenía una oportunidad para poderle dar un mejor futuro a mi hija, o venirme y sacrificar ese amor que realmente es, es muy duro y muy difícil. Today, Nathareth is finally coming to join her mum in London. Ese es mi sueño, que ella pueda tener una familia. And after a six-year wait, Letitia finally spots her daughter. It's 3 a.m. at Heathrow, and air traffic controller Gavin is beginning his shift. Hello, right, I'll take GMC 3 in the pit then, all right? So I'll do the subscription for 3 in the pit, and then 1 and Point 2. Point 85 to start, please, Pete. It's amazing, the views you get up here, and just being up here and looking out and seeing all the lights, it's peaceful. From an air traffic perspective, it's completely different day to night. In the day, you're trying to depart aircraft, you're trying to land aircraft. At night time, it's a completely different kettle of fish. The airfield is constantly on the go, you know, and if there's no aircraft moving on the airfield, it's a perfect opportunity for airfield operations to go on and do this stuff. At night, the airport's engineers can carry out essential maintenance, 
But Gavin must make sure they're clear before the runway's open at 6am. Check out, Roger. Huh? They've just given us nine right, literally this very second. Back now, yeah? Yes, sir. What's up? Well, there's so many things that airfield operations have to get on with, and they can't do it in the daytime. Because for us to close a taxiway in the daytime, when we've got so many aircraft trying to route through there, is an absolute nightmare. Out on the airfield, temperatures have dropped below zero. You know it's cold out because me boot is bright red. <laughs> Paddy is one of an army of de-icers, whose job is to cover every single departing plane with antifreeze before they can take off. Prepare to stop. Three, two, one, stop. It's hard to appreciate how cold it is, but you do get used to it. If you've got a a 747 and it's smothered in snow and it has been all night, then it, you know you'll be on it, you'll be on it a long time. You might feel your fingers by the end of it. The colder they are, the busier we are, non-stop, one to the other, get them all out by departure time. That's it, kick down as you are, Mike, take me into the corner of the stab. Nice and steady. Nice it's and steady. vital that Paddy covers every inch of the plane with a mixture of heated glycol and diluted water. Three, two, one, hold it there, stop, lovely. If you don't de-ice the aircraft properly, the long and short of it, it could come out of the sky, it's as simple as that. The air don't go over the wings as it should do, so it affects the flow over the surfaces. So it can create drag, and when you've got drag, you ain't got the lift. I won't go into too much detail, but, but basically, if you, haven't, if you don't de-ice it, um, then it might not take off. If it does take off, it might come straight back down. So it's important that we do it and do it properly. I tell the new boys, when they're de-icing, if I'm training them, I tell them that if, if they treat every de-ice like it's their first de-ice, and also if they imagine that all their family's on the aircraft, if they imagine all of them's on there, they're not going to be complacent. They're going to do it properly and understand the, like, the importance of it. The antifreeze lasts as little as 35 minutes, so Paddy must ensure the planes are ready for their departure slot. If they miss it, they'll have to come back and de-ice them again. All clear on the stab, mate? We have like 180 aircraft a day. So on a busy day, yeah, you'd be going one to the other, to the other, to the other. We've got to keep the customer happy, and we're good at that. I am anyway. Yeah, well, I can smell the bacon at the restaurant, so it's making me hungry. Clear of contamination. Jobs are good. Jobs always are good. The runways will be opening in five minutes. With 42 planes already circling in the skies above Heathrow, Gavin has to guide in as many as possible as quickly as he can. Once the first inbound comes in, that's it. You know, your air traffic head is back on 100%. 125's open. Speed with 78, good morning, runway 09 left, clear to land, surface wind 080 degrees, 5 knots. Sea line Delta Lima, contact channel 9. It's both runways are coming in. And at 6 a.m. sharp, Heathrow is open for business. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six on approach now for nine left and nine right. <coughs> Alternate. So this one's coming down nine left. The one on nine right is currently at two miles. So we land left, right, left, right. And then we'll try and get departures in between as well on nine right. 365 days a year we're running, we're open, whether it's one runway or two runways. 1,400 movements later, we're, uh, that's the end of the day. As Heathrow wakes up, inside Terminal 2, passenger experience manager Sue is getting ready for a busy day ahead. Morning. Come down, my love. I've been at the airport for 22 years. Yeah. It's really busy, always something happening, and I probably wouldn't work anywhere else. Boys, you haven't checked in, have you? Come here, I'm going to slap the back of your legs. Honestly, sir. These youngsters, go and get checked in. In the next week, the airport expects one and a half million passengers, but not everybody passing through has a smooth ride. 
Morning, my darling. Morning. Hello, my love. How are you? Now, I'm a bit concerned because I saw you here yesterday. Yeah. And you're here again today. So are you trying to get home? Um, I, I, I need a, a ticket before. Right. And you haven't got a ticket? Yeah, I have a ticket for 15. OK. So have we been upstairs to see whether they'll change it for you? Oh, they tried to change it. And? It's not going because it was a, a cheap uh, price. How much do they need to change the ticket? And how long have you been here? Uh, one week. That's not good now, is it? And you've got no family, no brothers, uh, no, no sisters no, that can no, pay no. The, the charge? I don't have that anymore. Can I see your ticket and let me see whether I can do anything for you? It's Maria. Bettina Maria. That's a lovely name, isn't it? Bettina. Bettina is visiting from Germany. She says that her London accommodation fell through, so she is planning to live in the terminal for two weeks until her flight home. OK, and they can't change it because they won't change it and because of the charge. Is that correct? Right, OK. Let me just go upstairs and see if I can um, get anything done about this and, and I'll come back down. OK, I'm going to take this with me because I need it. I'm Sue. Sue. Sue, yes. Okay. All right, my darling. I'll see you. I'll be back. All right, you just relax. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Something's not right, and I haven't put my finger on it yet. I'm a little bit concerned. Her face is swollen. She'll probably end up getting more confused, dehydrated. Then it'll be a hospital job. Unless Sue can help, Bettina will be stuck at Heathrow for the next 14 days. Oh, good morning. I'm so sorry to trouble you. Um, this lady, she... Um, she flew in, I think, as you probably know, on the 22nd. Um, she has been sleeping rough on the floor um, for, for, since she's arrived. She's a single elderly woman, um, and, and that is it. She doesn't have um, any other means, um, and that means she'll be sleeping on the floor. The ticket is non-changeable, and so the airline is not obliged to do anything. But Sue is determined to get Bettina home. Um, is there nothing that you can do? You can't override that... Thank you. Bye-bye, bye-bye. So they want an email to ask for me to actually ask the question whether they can. She can override it, but obviously they don't like to because it's a, a cost to them. I'm a little bit uh, sad about London because I wanted to stay here. I wanted to go to the Hyde Park to, to walk and uh, because of the, I saw it in the computer in my uh, travel agency that the hotel is near my or in front of the Hyde Park. I go back to Düsseldorf and uh, try to get my money back. You see me trying to write on this scrape with fingers and these little phones. It takes me forever. Right, send. Have I sent it? Send. Oh, it's gone. Oh, God, it's gone. It's gone. I'm a bit perturbed to say that she's been here five days and nothing's been done. She's sort of one of these people that slip under the, under the net. While Sue does her best to help Bettina, over in Terminal 3, the crowds are starting to arrive. Morning. Trolley assistant Angela must ensure that every one of today's 30,000 passengers has access to some wheels. I love it when it gets busy, because when it's busy, it's rush, rush, rush all over, and the time just goes like that really quickly. You've got to do a bit of swerving here. It's like a moving snake. <laughs> Hello, Sue. How are you doing? If you were to clock the mileage up, it's about nine miles that you'll do in a shift. All of these people have got trolleys, and as soon as they start piling up, people can't even get in to check in. They will get annoyed if they haven't got a trolley. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? I can't find a trolley. Mind your backs now, please. Look, they're all going away, and they're all family people. You know they're visiting family. That's so lovely. Airport is about 
reuniting families, isn't it? Because how else are they going to see each other if they're miles and miles away? Oof. They may not see us, but we're here, busying away. I mean, the whole airport would come to a standstill if we wasn't doing this. It never stops. Shut the door and send it to arrivals. Back in Terminal 2, Sue is still trying to help Bettina, the German tourist who has been living at Heathrow for the past five days. Hello. How are we getting on? Lovely. That's... Uh, yes, I can, I can sort that out. That's absolutely wonderful of you. Thank you so, so much. Bye-bye, bye-bye-bye. I'm very, very happy that she's not going to be here for another two weeks. I'm extremely happy. Um, and I'm going to go down and get her now, so that's absolutely wonderful. I should just tell the lady, darling, we're getting her on the 12.40. I'm going to bring her up. Thank you. Oh, what a result. Look at you now. You've got your face on. She looks beautiful. She's got her face on, she's got her lippies on, and you're going home in two hours. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. Oh, that's fine. Let's take you up. Let's get you home. I'm very pleased. You got any more um, liquids in your bag? Thanks to Sue. Bettina should be home by dinner time. Right, here we go. It's been lovely meeting you. Well done. Take care now. Take care. Thank you. I do the best I can when I can and then move on, because you have to, because you would take it home with you. Every week, thousands of animals land at the airport from all over the world. They're tiny. Each animal is collected by an officer from the animal reception center. Today, Karen is meeting a flight from Calgary in Canada with some VIP animals in the hold. It's snowing. Just to make them at home, it's snowing for them. It needs to be kept at a, a reasonably cold temperature and making sure they don't get too damp. Oh, there we are. That's a rather large crate. Hello. Beauty pies. Oh, they're looking really good. Very good. They've travelled very well. I think they probably slept all the way. Then they're looking to see what they can get up to. <laughs> These Gentoo penguins are destined for sea life Birmingham. But first, they need to go to the animal reception centre to be checked. They just don't need to be here for too long. We try and clear them as best as we can quickly, being they need to get back into their own environment. Right, get in the car now. They're lovely. Quite chilled. <laughs> Until we take the lid off, maybe. <laughs> Every animal that passes through must comply with strict importation rules. Karen's team need to read the microchips off every penguin. All the birds have chips on them. This record of all the animals coming through. Like dogs and cats are chipped. Large birds are chipped. But the jet-lagged Canadians aren't very keen on having their belly scanned. Yeah, all done. With all penguins successfully accounted for, they can begin their journey up the M1 to their new home in the Midlands. There you go, babies. Definitely a cup of tea. Well, not that one. Could we stop the 340? Ah, summer. That is only the summer. 
With flights leaving round the clock to over 185 destinations, Heathrow is home to Britain's plane enthusiast community. Heathrow is on the priority list. Um, you know, it's either number one or two of what to do at the weekend, and then the other things, you know, we fit in around it. Graham and Sandra have been coming to this car park on the perimeter of Heathrow for the last 44 years. My wife is the one yeah, uh, that so suggests that we come to Heathrow. Yeah. It's probably not my uh, first choice of what no, to do on a Sunday. But I always enjoy it up here. Ever since we've been married, I never get tired of it. I just love it. You know? I just uh, dream where I could be going. And <laughs> There's one coming. Just Emirates 380 is just going up over there. I do like jumbo jets, but the new big 380s, I love watching those. The bigger the plane, the better I like it, actually. It just gives me, personally, a buzz. If I'm feeling a bit down and I come up here, I just feel all, you know... Although we may not have even booked a holiday, it just makes me feel where we could go. It just um, brightens you up on a dull day. There are more than 30 plane spotters visiting today, but Sandra is unique. Yeah. I'll just keep oh, quiet. I'm so sorry for you. Yeah, I'll just keep quiet. Along, yes, know. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I think he does secretly like it. But I shall always be interested, oh, no matter yeah. what. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will always be found here. <laughs> In Terminal 3, passenger experience manager Mark has been called to manage a large group that have appeared in arrivals. We've got a guru coming in today. The guru's a religious leader. Uh, he's going to have his own entourage with him and he's going to have his own followers here to welcome their, their leader. Mark needs to ensure the group don't block the walkways or overwhelm the terminal. Oscar Free. Yeah, guys. Do you have any staff free, sir? We've got a guru coming through, but we're expecting about a couple of hundred followers, and I'm just I'm thinking a couple of security officers might be useful for crowd control. Everything about an airport is about flow. So there's about 20,000 people or so coming through here today. I have to maintain that flow. And now, if we've got a large group of followers here, they could potentially impact the flow, so we have to manage that. Airside, Sheikh Nakib ur Rahman has just arrived. And Mark's colleague, Matt, is there to escort him through the terminal as quickly as possible. They need to move fast. As back at arrivals, the large crowd is spilling out of the cordon. Guys, can I just get you back inside? Yeah, just inside the barrier, guys. He's on his way. He won't be long now. Do we have an ETA for being at the um, arrivals area, sir? Because we've got a bit of a crowd building now. Oh, we'll see. Thank you very much. Oscar free out. We've got potentially a 20 minute delay now, um, which is not ideal because we're getting quite a large number of followers arriving. So I, I can't have it getting overcrowded and people getting blocked. Ladies, I know you want to give him the flowers, but can I ask you to go back over there because I've just got to maintain the security cordon. Did you have a good flight? Good, good, not bad. It's very cold here at the moment. Ladies and gents, can I get you to move back a bit? He's coming now. Oscar Free, Oscar Free. Oscar Free, receive him. Coming at the end, back door, sir. Coming now. That's all received, sir. Thank you very much. The sheikh, who practices an aspect of Islam called Sufism, stops for some impromptu blessings in the middle of arrivals. We are here and we travel throughout the world to give the message of peace, love, love and tolerance, which the essence of Islam is. And what did you think of the greeting you got today? Yeah, it's great. You can see smiling faces greeting each other and just spreading love. As he heads off to start his UK tour, the Sheikh stops to thank Matt and give him a special farewell. 
I got a, a kiss on either cheek and uh, didn't do it to anyone else. And when I asked, apparently that's a good sign. Um, well, I hope so, at least anyway. What more could you ask for a day at Heathrow? But there's no let up for Matt and the rest of Heathrow's hidden army of workers. As evening draws near, thousands more passengers are turning up and preparing to fly through Britain's busiest airport.